is very, very um, informative and it helps me personally to be a better Muslim. I'll give you a little example how we all get drowned into this shakes and, and Sharia confusion. If we were to follow the Quran and we read Surah Al Jummah, chapter 62, verse 9, and if you don't remember, take the CD after the Salah. You would have seen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amunu, idha nudi ala salati min yawm al juma, fas'au ila dhikrillah. Wadharu al ba'i. Thalikum khairul lakum in kuntum ta'alamun. What Allah says in the Quran, O oh, ye who believe, Muslims, brother, everybody here, and you all believe? Uh huh. He says, if you believe, when the call for prayer is proclaimed for Juma, don't take your own nanny time, as we say. Delay dala and come to masjid how you feel. Allah is saying, hey son, leave everything. Leave all your businesses and everything and hasten quickly to the khutbah. And then what happened? We go and ask a sheikh and say, sheikh, boy, I don't really make it for Juma in time. Is that all right? He say, yeah, no problem. As long as you get this salah, you're all right. Isn't that contrary to the Quran? Allah is saying, Fasarila dhikrullah, hasten to the remembrance of Allah, which means the dhikr, the khutbah that has been designed in Islam. And the Sheikh tells you, Don't worry, Sharia is alright as long as you get this salah. And also, don't worry, the hadith says, If you miss three salah, then you become on the fence of kuf. So, one, two, and the third, you go for Juma. Open the shop for two businesses, and then go for Juma, the third one. So, we all start taking the second secondary level of Islam we're not following Quran directly and do you know what was one of the destruction for the people in the past because they never respected the Sabbath day this Juma is our Sabbath this is our holiest day this is our holiest prayer we allow the sheikhs and the Sharia to tell us you don't need to follow this law as Allah says to do it come on because it suits us I'm sorry that most of you were not here when I was speaking about the ladies. That we send the ladies for every other education. Learn English, but you don't send them to learn to read Quran. Learn biology, learn chemistry, learn to become a lawyer, learn to become a doctor, learn to become a businesswoman, learn to become a, an accountant, but we don't start to send them to learn the Quran. What did the Prophet wasallam say? Talabul ilm, farizatun, ala kulli muslimin wa muslimatin. Knowledge is compulsory upon males and females, not only men alone. So why do we find it practical to send our women, all of us, long beard, praying salah five times a day, beating our heads, and then have this cultural Islam? Okay to send our women to study every other la studies in BCC college and FIU and FAU, but we can't send them to the mosque to learn to read Quran? We can't send them to listen to the khutbah. Where, do we, where did we get that from? As I, as I say, if you don't send them out to these other places, then mashallah, you don't need to send them in the masjid. You stay home and teach them. And then when they grow corrupted, and they want to bring the children up corrupted, and they don't want your children to study Islam and Quran and Hadith, and they don't want your children to become sheikhs and alims and hufas, then you wonder, what kind of wife did I marry? Ah, because for all these years the wrong system took place so if you plant a wrong tree you will get wrong fruit let these radical imams brainwash some of us we come here we sit we sleep in khutbas we don't get the message that's why we miss it all i need you to be grateful are you telling me Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not protect the, the prestige of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam?